up, y'all? It's DMC to K-I-N-G. I'm going to say this once. I ain't going to say it again. DMC and the place to be and the place for you to be is right here with Fred Wright. Tales from the pen. <laughs> Salute, people. We back. Fred Wright, Tales from the pen. If you're new to the channel, go down and hit the subscribe button. Click the bell notification. Click the word all and make sure the bell is shaded in. This way, anytime I put up a video, you will know about it. For those who may have just stumbled upon my channel, my name is Fred White. I'm from Queens, New York. And I talk about my experiences and my life in a non-glorification kind of way. So that these kids understand that prison is not a game. I do it for the kids. Yeah, I do. I did almost 16 years of my life. I went to prison as a teenager. And I'm here to share my experiences and my stories. So today we're going to continue on a save a prisoner tour. And we're going to mosey on up to Clinton Correctional Facility. Now Clinton Correctional Facility is unlike any facility I've ever been in. They've all been unique in some type of way. But with Clinton Correctional Facility, the yard was the weirdest part of it. Yeah. The yard, when you come out on the yard, it's like a sand beach. It's like all sand. Like even playing baseball in it was hard. It's like, it's all sand. And then you got a whole line, of, a row of phones. And then to the right here is the weight coach. Only, a, it's like five or six. If you don't know anybody in Clinton, you can't just go on and lift the weight. Go on and start lifting weights. That's not how it works. Somebody will come and tell you, yo, bro, this is not your court. You got to go. Like, if you're new and don't know. So if you don't know anybody, you're not getting on the weight court. You are not lifting weights. That's how it goes. So, and then you got the junkyard. We call it, like, the junkyard. It's, kind of, it's like a hill with a bunch of little courts on them. We call them courts. They're just little dirt patches. You can have maybe six people on the court and it has one of those barrels. You ever see the barrels? Like, 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 like in Rocky IV when they singing the doo-wop, doo-wop, doo-doo, take me back. And they're around the barrel with the fire singing out in Philly. Like that, they're like barrels. And every Saturday, you can get wood and you put it in your barrels and you can, you can start your own little fires up there. You cook up there. Anyway, so this kid comes to the jail. His name is Frank. We're gonna call him Frank O. Frank O was from around my way. He was a few years older than me. Seen him around my way. Knew his brother a little bit. His brother was into break dancing. They was all older than me though. But they lived on my block. So when he came through, whatever, we started by, like, yo Frank, oh, how you doing? You know? He knew he had heard I caught the bit. I already had 10, 12 years in by now, 13. So, you know, seeing him, how you doing, how's everything? Italian guy, very smug in his, you know, looking at people and stuff like that. Very different. So, you know, we were all right there, but I seen the crew that, you know, he ended up hanging, you know, he was into the dope. He was sniffing that dope. That's why I didn't really fuck with him like that. Like when he first got there, he had asked me, can he come on the weight court? And I told him, no, you can't come on the weight court. The weight courts don't work like that. You got to get approval to come on. You know what I'm saying? You got to get cool with dudes or whatever. Or somebody got to know you. You got to be fair. You know what I mean? I got on, you know, you guys know Ja. Ja's my guy, Lawrence Bartley. That's my, you guys know I did the interview with him. Shout out to him. Love him. That's how I got on the court. And I got, you know what I mean? And then life went from there. It was like me. The Queens dudes was like me. Big Ja. Uh, uh, uh. Beretta, shout out to Bernard. Beretta's from around my way too. Us, uh, then you had the Brooklyn dude, you had, you, you had Sly, shout out to Doug. Uh, 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 Big Ron dude from Van Dyke. He does a lot of episodes, he did a few episodes with St. Lads. Ron dude, uh, uh, Stink, Sir, my man Luck Bills. You guys know I, I had Luck Bills, I did an interview with Luck Bills too, he was on the weight court. There's only a few, but you can't just come on the weight court, it don't work like that. As a matter of fact, one of my boys, Donnie, I grew up with him, Darnell, 
from fucking kindergarten, first grade, all of that. He came through there. He, Diesel do, you know what I mean? He, he got on the court with us for a little while until dudes found out he was sniffing dope. I love Donnie, you know, that's my man. I love Donnie. It is what it is. We, again, we grew up together. He had to go. Darnell had to go. And I had to be the one to tell him, like, yo, you can't come on the court, son. You know what I mean? You fuck with that shit. That's the certain rules in prison, man. There's certain rules that I always stuck by. And the people I fuck with stuck by. 90% of them. Right? You don't get involved with gangs. This is for you kids, too, right now. When you, you don't get involved with gangs. You don't get involved in the, 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 the homosexuality and, and things like that that's going on in there. And you don't get involved with drugs. A lot of people will also say, hey, Fred, but what about gambling? You can get involved in gambling if you got it. If you ass bet, then you can't. Ass betting is, I bet a carton of cigarettes on this football game. I lose. I don't have the carton of cigarettes. That's called ass betting. Now you got to deal with whatever consequences or however the person, you know what I mean? Whatever's going to happen. You're putting yourself in a certain situation. I had to tell Darnell he couldn't come on, he couldn't be on the court with us. No more. Anyway, not that we weren't cool, it's just it is what it is. So this dude Frank was running around and he was a dope fiend. He would have his family send people money all over the place. Like these dudes was buying up everything in the yard. And I knew his family. They ain't got it like that. I, you know what I mean? I knew. But anyway. So one day, the dude's on the court. You know what I mean? Again, I'm not, I'm not going to say who or what. But dudes was dealing everything in the jail. Some of the dudes I was with. A couple of dudes I just mentioned. And we ain't going to say who. They were them dudes in Clinton. What happened was, they start telling me the story. Yo, this dude took some dope and signed into PC. Now, in Clinton, in the front of the tiers, they have double bunks. The cells are barely big enough for one. They got double bunks. So Frank O was with this other white guy. I don't know the white guy's name. I, all I know is his fucking nose was over like this. That's all I fucking know. His fucking nose was thin. Fucking little diesel kind of white guy, but dope fiends. So what happened was Frank's bunky took a bunch of dope on the yard. You know, that's how it works. It's not like pay right there. It's not like that. You got it? I right, bet. Give me the information. You give them, you know, you give them the drugs and they send your people or they, you know, do outside transactions. So it's more like a trust thing that you got to trust that this person is going to pay. You know what I mean? Most of the time. You know, sometimes people do shit with, uh, with cigarettes and stamps and all that. But when you're dealing with dope and dealing with hundreds of dollars, it's just easier. Yo, your people send it to my people. Here's the address. Here's a whatever. Here's the Western Union. However they do it. So Frank's bunky took a bunch of dope. Now understand, Frank is a dope fiend. So is his bunkie. They do it together. Okay? Bunky signs in the peak, gets all this dope. Says, man, I can't pay this shit. Signs in, somebody's gonna kill him. You know, or he do the King Vaughn gay thing, I'm gay, whatever the fuck he did. I gotta get the fuck out of here before they kill me. Right, you see like King Vaughn did, guys? King Vaughn said, I'm gay, get me out this block. Yeah, that's a whole other video. Anyway, rest in peace to him, man. I don't know why I would do that. He, he's dead, whatever, whatever. So, now dudes are saying, Frank got to pay that. They were road dogs, they were bunkies, they sniffed the dope together every fucking day, two fucking dope fiends. One left, you stuck with the bag, literally. Homie signed in and left him stuck with the bag, literally, the bag, the bag, the bag, left him with the bag. So now these dudes is telling me they gonna hit Frank. They gonna have Frank hit, you know what I'm saying?
So I'm like, well, hold on, hold on. Let me talk to him. They're like, yo, Fred, talking. Let me talk to him first. He was going to get hit tonight in the yard. He was getting hit tonight. Because, you know, dudes first approached him about it. You know what I mean? He, he said he didn't want to pay. He was getting hit. I had to, hold on, stop, stop. Let me talk to him. I started spinning the yard with him. And we ended up staying out there talking, walking that yard for like 45 minutes to an hour. Because right away I'm telling him, what's happening with you? What's going on? I'm telling you know, like, what happened with your man? He's like, you know, he signed in, he did some bullshit, bitch shit. I'm like, yo, bro, but you know you got to pay that. You know the rules of the game. You, you, you did it with him. He's like, nah, he did that all by himself. I'm like, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. You did it with him, bro. And it doesn't even matter if you did it with him or whatever. It's, it's, your, it's on you. Forget what everything else. It's on you now. What's, what you gonna do? He's like, Fred, but I'm like, no, ain't no Fred nothing, man. I can't save you with this. I can't save you with this. Like, if it was maybe a, a few dollars, $50 or something, maybe I wouldn't even take care of it for him. I've done some, stuff like that in the past for people. Help them. Like, yo, man, take, go pay them people, man, before they kill you. I've helped people. Other stories, they're coming. We got a whole fucking series here. So I'm like, all right, if that's your decision, bro, are you telling me that you're not paying I said, because I'm just telling you, I'm going to walk off. And he's like, Fred, please don't walk off. He knew. He got the vibes. Because I was trying to tell him what was about to happen. Without actually saying, you see that dude by that fence there? You see that dude by that phone right there? You see that other dude by the heavy bag? Yeah. That's the hit team waiting for you. <laughs> Without me telling him that, he got the vibes. He understood. I said, Frank, if I walk away, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, Fred, please. Don't walk away. He said, because I know as soon as you walk away, I'm gonna get, um, it's going to happen, right? I said, yeah, it's going to happen, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, so you, you better come up with a, a better answer, bro, for me to go and, you know what I mean? It's my, it's my guys. Work out every day together. People. He did not, we walked the yard for about 45 minutes because he didn't want me to walk away. He was afraid that I was going to walk away and what was going to happen. And that is exactly what was going to fucking happen. That was 100% what was going to happen. I saved that motherfucker's life. He said he was going to pay. Don't play with me, bro. You, I promise, blah, blah, blah. Yep. You know what I mean? Went to, went to my guy. Yo, he going to pay. That's it. Done. And he ended up, you know what I mean? He ended up paying, and he ended up living. He ended up living. I seen him, he's home. Well, he may be back by now, because he's doing his Let me tell you, first time I fucking seen him in the street, I fucking saved this guy. First fucking time I seen him in the street, guys. See him on the corner, oh, what's up, what's up, Frank? Oh, yeah, give me love and everything. It's me and him talking, he's like, yo, look at him. Who got the diesel out here? Who got the dog food? That's what he's asking me. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I want to shut up shop out here. I, motherfucker, I know you're not asking me who got dope out here so you can set up shop, motherfucker. You was looking for it because you was looking for it. You was itching. You know what I'm saying? He was one of them functional dudes. Like, he will work for a little while, but then he's do getting arrested for burglaries and this and like that. Like, since he's been home, I know he's been arrested a couple times for, like, burglaries. I think... Last time I heard he got arrested in Florida or something like that. But he was back in New York. I don't fucking know. Dope fiends. This is what dope, this is what drugs do to you. I can't, that's why I can't understand this new generation of fucking dope fiends. How do you see these dope fiends and these dudes laying in the street all twisted and you as a young kid, younger generation decide, you know what, I want to try that too. That's some fucking goofball shit. I'll never understand this new generation of dope fiends, never, after you see the blueprint of what it did to everybody else, that you decided, I want to sniff that too. Some fucking clown shit. Anyway, I saved that motherfucker in jail. But here's the, here's the lesson here, kids. Understand, stay your ass in school. You don't got to go through these type scenarios. 
You don't gotta go through these, uh, uh, you know, crazy, 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 crazy experience. You don't have to. Everything is situated out here. You can go to school, you can do the right thing, you can make your own choices. That's what life is about, making your own choices. Living your life but making good and positive choices, kids. Understand this. So yeah, that's part three of my Save a Motherfucker series. I got a few more installments. You know what I mean? I got one where I gave him the knife and he didn't want to do it. He goes to stab somebody that he had to stab and he didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. You guys want that one next? Or you want a, 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 another white dude around my way? I saved him from a drug debt? Or do you want another one who I stopped them from, from, from beating up because he didn't want to get no more weed in? Like, I got so many fucking stories, guys. Bear with me. We also got the book bag giveaway coming up. I got to start putting these in my videos, guys. The book bag videos giveaway is going to be September 2nd. It's going to be in Brooklyn. And we're giving away book bags. If anybody wants to donate, hit the cash app, Tales from the Pen, just like that. You know what I mean? I got a whole bunch on the way already. And we're trying to do some positive things, man. We're trying to get back to the community. We're trying to get back to the kids. That's what we're doing. So if anybody is interested in donating to our book bag free giveaway, Tales from the Pen, hit the cash app. Guys, you know the motto. Experience is the greatest teacher. But somebody else's experience can be just as valuable if you pay attention and listen. And on that note, people, Fred White, signing off.